God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Praise God. The book of Samuel, how revealing. The life of David. The key to David. Spoken of in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. A key that gives you the entrance that many others are shut out of because you take the time to understand your Father's Word. We're going to learn a great deal about that key. Are you alert? Are you sharp? Have you paid attention when you heard uh, Jonadab ask uh, Jehu, May I come up into your chariot? Jonadab, of course, was a Kenite. Jehu let him in. How wise are you? Do you know David's children? And do you know Cain's children? You see, that's what the key is about. You, God will be warning you in this very chapter, and it will be brought about by not the sin of David's children, but the sin that David committed, that God himself would bring the, I'm going to call it a curse, yes, through the children upon David. I do not believe in as much as Yeshua Messiah would come through this bloodline that any of it ha happened by accident, but as types and references for you today to sharpen up and know and understand what your father tries to tell you. The things that would happen to our people, the persecution throughout generation after generation through this family of David. Let's see how sharp you are. Chapter 13, verse 1, a word of wisdom from our father in Yeshua's name. Let's go with it. Verse 1, chapter 13, 2 Samuel. And it came to pass after this, after what? After David uh, had been corrected by our father, the Ammonites uh, defeated, or Moabites, was it not? And then David's sin, David's great sin, and this is what happens next. God has already decreed what would happen to David's family back in verse 11 of the prior chapter, that is to say 12. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. I want to, I want to tell you, Absalom, Ab, his father, and Salom is peace. The father of peace was his name. And Absalom would be 20 years old at this time. He had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. Tamar means a palm tree. Tamar was 15 years old at this time. And Amnon, do you remember him? Firstborn of David. He was 22. The oldest and the firstborn. The son of, the son of David loved her. Uh, Amnon loved her, but he also lusted after her. Now, these are not these children are not all by the same mother. Absalom and Tamar are by one mother, and uh, Amnon is uh, by another mother. You remember the old boy that gave David and his herdsmen such a hard time, crusty old rascal, and uh, God killed him, and David took his wife. She was the mother of this one, um, Amnon. Amnon, then, you see, being the firstborn, first fruit, would have been the child of David that Christ would come through. But David had sinned. And God has a lesson he wants you to learn. Verse 2. Amnon means faithful. All right? I, I'll just throw that in for passing. Verse 2. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. He lusted after her. For she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. In other words, at this time, virgins wore special clothing, and they were kept secluded to themselves, 
with the elders um, of the king, that is to say the elders, uh, kinsmen, women folk, and they were never allowed to be with anyone unless there was a witness there. And Abs uh, Amnon was just, he was out of business as far as trying to um, encourage her to come to him or him go to her. It was impossible. And it was driving him out of his mind. He, he wasn't eating right. He was failing. Now how sharp are you? Listen to me. Verse 3. But Amnon uh-oh, beware friends, especially if they carry this name, whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. Now you can call this a type. Or you can call this whatever you want to. One of the only other people in God's Word named Jonadab, who was that Jonadab of Jeremiah chapter 35 that was the son of Rechab, 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, who were Kenites, which is to say sons of Cain, and Cain being the son of he that was subtle above all. And you have it right there. He had a friend, and the friend was very subtle. That means he was very cunning. Very cunning, unfortunately, in an evil way. I want you to see the part that he plays in this. Um, very subtle. Verse 4. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? You, you look scant. Gaunt. You don't even look like you're eating right. Wilt thou not tell me? Question. And Ammon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. See, she would have been his half sister, but Absalom's full sister. Now you might say, Well, are you trying to tell us this man is a key? No, I'm saying the mark is there. Just because he called himself David's nephew, and just because he, he stated he was the son of David's father, doesn't necessarily make it any more so than it is written in Matthew chapter 1, verse 16, that Jacob begat Joseph, and Joseph was the husband of Mary, unto whom Christ was born. To the weak, or not, I'm not going to say to the weak, but to the one that wasn't sharp, you would think then that Joseph was Jesus' father. It doesn't necessarily make it so, do you understand? For in that case, we know it wasn't so. I contend, because of the marks of Satan on this one, that there was um, something very strange in the woodpile. All right? <clears throat> Got it? Verse 5. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. Pretend to be sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. In other words, Father, I love that sister of mine, and perhaps it will give me an appetite. Let her come to my side. This uh, Jonadab knew pretty well how to disguise things, did he not? Do you understand the mark? Put this in a spiritual sense. How can you wheel and deal? Or are you wise enough that someone can wheel and deal with you with scriptures, subtlety, and have you eating out of their hand? To seduce you even spiritually before you know what happened? The idea is sharpen up when someone subtle in an evil way is in your presence. Oh, goody-goody preacher Sam, two shoes. All right? Beware, friend. Verse 6. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, now bear in mind this is David's oldest 
child, firstborn, heir to the throne, and David loves him very much. Amon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tabar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her head. God can weave so much into his word, or some even accuse me of it. Do you remember the cakes in Ezekiel chapter 4? The undone cakes. Got something in the wood pile? Be careful. Beware. Seven. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amon's, Amon's uh, house and dress him eat. See if you can comfort him. See if you can cheer him up. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 8. So Tamar went to her brother Amon's house, Amnon's house, and he was laid down, and she took flour and kneaded it, made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. Verse 9. And understand this. You remember this girl's mother. She was an exceedingly bright woman. She was the one that ran even her husband's, what was his name, Nabal? Now, ran his camp even for him, if you would. I'm, I'm going to go back to 1 Samuel. I think it's chapter 3, about verse 3. I've, I've forgotten the mother's name. It slipped my mind. and I'll, I, I think it will help you if you can remember the mother, and I know you will. I hope that I have the right chapter. Verse, uh, no. I'm sorry, Second Samuel, verse uh, 3. I'm back in first here. Second Samuel, chapter 3, about verse 3. Let's take it as 2. And to David were sons born in Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon, that's the oldest, who was 22, of Ahinaham, the Jesuitist, remember, that wife, and his second... Caleb of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, and the third, Ablison, the son of Maachiah, the daughter of Telmiah, Telma, rather, king of Geshur. So, um, actually, Tamar and Absalom are of this king of Geshur. Not necessarily... In other words, kings of the foreigner, if you would, uh, okay? So, with that in mind, um, the, um, we'll, we return, all right, to the 13th chapter. And we get ready for verse 9. So, Tamar went to her brother Eman's house, and he was laid down. That's verse 8, 9. And she took a pan. You remember in Ezekiel chapter 4, the pan was symbolic of the wall. I just say that for those that want to take it a little deeper. And poured them out before him. And he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. In other words, I want to be all alone with my sister when you're the king's first fruit, uh, they usually would obey. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother, her half-brother. Eleven. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her, and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. Twelve. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, no, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly, Leviticus 18, verses 6 and 9, remember the law? She knew the law. But at the same time, I'm sure Ablasam had said, Salam had said, well, she's my half-sister, 
Sarah was Abraham's half-sister, maybe it would work. And you know something? Probably as much as David loved this man, this son, had he asked him for this daughter's hand in marriage, David would probably have given in to it. Verse 13, as we read, And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools of Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. You know how proud he is of you. You know how uh, he loves you. Ask him. Now, whether she, I'm sure she uh, cared for this uh, half-brother, or she wouldn't have said that, but then she might have been saying anything just to get out of his greasy paws. 14. Albeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she forced her and lay with her. He raped her. 15. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. So that he, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Let me rephrase that more correctly. The hate that he hated her with was stronger than the lust that he lusted after her with. And Amnon said unto her, Arise and be gone. This would have been the insults of insults to one of the royal family to be used and dumped. Lust and love are not the same thing. You got the picture? 16. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil, is sending, this evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. That you sending me away, acting as though it is my fault that this happened, is a greater sin than your having forced me. But he would not hearken unto her. That guilt in public against the woman that would make it appear as though it was her fault by he hating her and turning on her. 17. You might say, well, I wouldn't think people would do that. Friend, you know people better than that. People are that way. It's unfortunate that they will most often turn on the woman. It is very sad. Verse 17. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. The Kenite had given him the advice or the type of Kenite, but I don't believe David's brother was his father. I think his father was a Kenite. Has brought this shame upon the family. Have they ever brought any shame upon your family? I don't mean necessarily in this respect. I mean through usury or whatever method. 18. And she had a garment of diverse co divers colors upon her. It was the garment of a virgin. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. What an insult. The height of insult. 19. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of di divers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head. She covered her face so that no one could recognize her and went on crying. Verse 20. Her full brother and Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Ammon thy brother been with thee? Question. But hold now thy peace, my sister. He didn't, she didn't have to answer. It was obvious. Hold now your peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Even as a widow, she hid herself away. She didn't tell it, out publicly that is. You see, Abs Absalom the father of peace intends to take care of it himself. You got it? And rightfully so. Good deal. 21. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. 
He didn't do anything about it, though. Why? He remembered the 11th verse of this 12th chapter, not that it had a verse or a chapter at that time. What I'm saying is he remembered the words of God that they were coming to pass. Verse 22, And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, Neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. What it really says, so that you understand it real well, is he said not a word to him. And old Amnon knew that the days were numbered and the time would come. But needless to say, things went on because Tamar kept her mouth closed and maybe he thought, maybe I got away with it. And they'll tell him what he called her in private. That is to say, Amnon. 23, and it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is beside Ephraim, or Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. In other words, this was a time of festivities at the sheep sharings. You'll remember it was at a sheep sharing that Judah um, took Tamar, another Tamar, his own daughter-in-law. Verse 24. I mean, it was a time of festivity. And Absalom came to the king, that's David, and said, Behold now, thy servant hath sheep shares. Let the king, I beseech thee and his servants, go with thy servant. All of you come with me to feed, join the feast. And Absal Absalom was a very rich man himself in this time, was very successful. He had many children. Verse 25. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. What this really says is David's house was large, remember, probably two or three hundred. He said, we would be a burden to you. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Gave him his blessings and went along. Tw didn't, uh, rather, stayed home. 26. Then said Abelisam, listen up, if not, if you can't go, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? Question. Still a little suspicious that the firstborn might be uh, ridiculed or uh, knocked down a peg or two because Absalom still hasn't forgiven nor spoken to this one. 27. But Absalom pressed him that he let Amnon and all the king's son go with him. Let all of them come. It's a feast day. We're having a party, a ball. Let them come. And I suppose David thought, well, after two years, why not? Let's, let's have peace in the family. Perhaps God has forgiven us. 28. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. And when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you, be courageous and be valiant. You see, the price for a man raping a woman is death. And the st first stone cast by the nearest of kin. That's God's way. It puts a stop to that sort of thing. It just doesn't happen, for God said others will see and fear, and these things shall cease happening among you. That's the price for a rapist. Death at the hand of the avenger, that's to say the nearest of kin. 29, and the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. They killed him. It's according to God's law. Just as legal as can be, even though two years had transpired. The same you hear people say, well, God doesn't says thou shalt not kill. No, you don't understand the Greek manuscripts. Christ said you shall not commit a violent murder or you will be judged. And you get a bunch of these punks that will go around raping and then almost murdering or murdering, and then you have a few say, don't bring the death penalty upon a teenage a penalty on a teenager. God didn't list an age. 
He said, if you premeditate murder, fry them. They're old enough for, to fry, and they're legal tender. Burn them. That's God's way, friend. You won't have any more trotting through New York Park than looking for fun. They'll find out it's not any fun to be killed by the hand of God. Well, I've never heard a minister talk like that. Well, you've never heard too many te teachers teach the Word of God then. You've heard a bunch of strokers and ignorant eremuses that don't know how to come sick them about God's Word. It's very clear in the Father's Word what happens to people that do that. They die. Anytime they're the age of accountability, of reason from right from wrong, say eight or nine, and they, much less to say fourteens, twelves, they are to be killed. And these things will stop. You want to know what stops the crime rate? God said that will stop your crime rate because it will be done publicly. Others will see and fear, and these things will cease happening among you. There is no prison charge, no guard fees to be paid. Just kill them and bury them. Get it over with. Do it publicly. I wonder how many of you call and say, well, where is that written in the Scripture? Have you never read? It disappoints me that people haven't. Have you never read the Word of God? Jesus said, I come not to destroy one jot of the law, but to fulfill it. For as you have heard, and as it says in the English, you have heard it is written, you shall not kill. And your bleeding heart strokers don't know Greek. They don't know come sick them. It says, you shall not commit violent crime or you'll be judged. You'll be killed. That's what Jesus said. And that's what's supposed to happen to them. Well, I just thought, I suppose the Holy Spirit moved on that, and I suppose some of you are shocked. That's God's way, friend, whether you like it or not. So like it or lump it, friend, that's the way it is. That's God's word. It is scriptural. I can document it. These soft soapers can't document what they don't know. Okay, I'm going to start over on that verse 29. And the servants of Absalom, Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's son arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. You had the donkey parade. I mean, they thought this is a, he's killing every one of the sons. Run for your life. In other words, it was not all that unusual that one son would kill all the others, and then he had a cinch on the kingship, all right? They figured that was what was happening. There was a massacre about to take place that Absalom would kill all the brothers. Those mules or donkeys or asses were over the hill, and I mean gone at a fast gallop, as fast as they could kick them along. I'm sure that would have been quite a sight to see as this rapist lay dead on the floor as he was supposed to have, 30. And it came to pass while they were in the way, in other words, they were on their way in high gear. Have you ever seen an ass in overdrive? Well, that's what they were. On their way, that tidings came to David. That's, that's a donkey or a mule, whatever you prefer, in overdrive. Yep. And uh, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Now, lest you've gone to sleep on me, I want to reread that. And it came to pass while they were on their way. Hey, they're racing as fast as a mule can go, friend. And word has already got back beforehand, and they didn't have telegraph in that day. How could that be? Do you smell something else in the woodpile, friend? That's, then I give you an A+. Plus. Saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's son, and there's not one of them left. How could that word have traveled so fast? Jonadab, little Kenite in the woodpile, 31. Then the king arose and tear his garments and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent, 32. Let's just roll along with it. And Jonadab, oh, oh. you see, anytime you smell one, look close, you'll see him. There he was. The son of Shimei, David's brother, or at least David's brother thought it was his son, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons. How would he know? Stop and think. Two and two makes four, friend. He knew beforehand. For 
Amnon only is dead. He knew Absalom was going to kill Amnon out there. He knew what the plan was because he probably, if anything, helped plan it. He was in on it. The same as he was in on getting Amnon to commit the crime in the first place, to help him, to assist. And here he is, Johnny on the spot. For Amnon only is dead, for by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Always in the know. Isn't that wonderful? How sharp are you? How have you got your key to David filed real nice and sharp? God's teaching you a lesson in the curse that came down on his own family. 33. Now therefore, let not my lord the king take the thing to his heart to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon only is dead. Dear old uncle, I am here to save you grief and to give you the truth. Now you can give me a reward by letting me keep in on the inside, the no. Make a few extra bucks on the side, because as long as I keep up with the king's merchandise, I know where to, I know which stock to play, don't I? Key night's a key night, friend, regardless of what name he goes by. Jesus said, something very important one time by their fruits you shall know them friends that's the fruit of Satan right there doesn't matter what name he goes by the fruit is there 34 but Absalom fled and the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there came much people by the way of the hill side behind them see they're just getting there okay they're just getting there 35 and Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as thy servant said, so it is. I told you the truth, because I knew beforehand. Now, he didn't, he didn't say he knew them beforehand. But if David only knew how that conniver, how that God had allowed him and through him to bring the entire thing about Kenites, a Kenite is a Kenite, friend. A son of Cain is a son of Cain. A bad fig is a bad fig. Have you never read even as Jesus taught. All right, bless your hearts. We'll pick this up in the next lecture.